Waves like these can be represented in different ways, and you can use these representations to measure important properties of the waves. Okay, one way to represent the wave is in a displacement distance graph like this. This line here is called the equilibrium line, and particles along that line have zero displacement, and that's where they'd be if there was no disturbance. In other words, if there's no wave traveling along, that's where the particles would come to a rest. Okay, when there is a wave moving through, each particle is displaced away from its equilibrium position. And we can measure the displacement like this. So this particle here has a displacement of 60. This particle here has a displacement of minus 60. That's because displacement is a vector. So you need to consider both the distance and the direction of each particle from the equilibrium line. Another important quantity to measure about waves is the amplitude. The amplitude is a maximum displacement of a particle from the equilibrium line. Okay. All particles in a progressive wave have the same amplitude. What do I mean by this? So as the wave travels along like this, each particle has the opportunity to move away from the equilibrium line and occupy the maximum displacement. Another important quantity is the wavelength, which is the distance from a point on the wave to the same point on the next wave. For example, from peak to peak or from trough to trough like this, but it can also be just from any point to the exact same point on the next wave. You need to be careful here to not mistake these two points as being the same. That's because this particle here is actually going to be moving up and this particle here is, move, is moving down. So that's not the same point. It's this particle here, which is the same point as that one we've previously marked. Okay, another important quantity is the time period, which is the time taken for one complete oscillation. Another way of interpreting is this as the time taken for one wave to pass the point. So for example, if I mark a point like this and a time how long it takes for a wave to pass, that will give me the time period in seconds. Time period is closely related to frequency. Frequency is the number of oscillations per unit time. Or another way of interpreting that is, is to measure the number of waves that pass a point per unit time. So if I measure how many waves pass in a second, I would get the frequency in Hertz. So for example, if I said, 50 hertz, that would mean there are 50 oscillations or 50 waves passing per second. So hertz just means oscillations per second. Um, the time period and frequency are related using this equation, which can, which can also be written like this. Uh, F stands for frequency in hertz and T, capital T, is time period in seconds. Okay, so we saw in a displacement distance graph like this that the distance between two points like these is the wavelength. However, sometimes instead of using a displacement distance graph, you can use a displacement time graph, where now the graph represents the displacement of one particle and how that changes with time. So because now the x-axis is time, not distance, we can't, this is not wavelength anymore. Okay, instead, this is actually the time period, the time it takes for one complete oscillation.